Hey, 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 what the heck? What the heck? Sorry, guys. My name is Sites Kosana, and this is Close Up Education. Yes, I've heard you cry. You are saying you want more of geography. And yes, 2023 matriculants passed. 89% of South African matriculants passed. Wow, that is amazing, guys. Thanks. A round of applause. And unfortunately, 11% didn't make it. You definitely do not want to be part of that 11%. How can you not? Like this video, subscribe to my channel because of we are moving to what we call mid-latitude cyclone. Why am I teaching that? Because of I'm from South Africa and this weather condition usually occurs in my country. Yes, we are affected by this weather condition. Alright, first we have to understand what is mid latitude cyclone the definition make sure that you run off to your room bring that scrapbook put it on top of your lap and write this definition what is the definition the definition says a mid latitude cyclone there are low pressure weather condition which occurs in winter between 30 to 60 degrees and they move eastwards or you could say what from west to east all right Let's write it down. I said it's a low pressure weather condition which occurs in winter between 30 degrees to 60 degrees latitudes and they move eastwards yes how did i find eastwards this is our direction you write your cross and you say never eat sour worms i've spoken about this on my first video all right so how do we understand or break down this definition we first understand that this is a low pressure weather condition what is a low pressure low pressure simply means there is a rising air meaning this weather condition is associated with rising air and we know in the northern hemisphere the air rises anti-clockwise or they could say counterclockwise and in the southern hemisphere the air rises clockwise all right now we know that this weather condition is also associated with rising air all right then secondly when is it occurring where does it usually affect this country or this when does it usually affect south africa we say in winter right it affects south africa in winter all right now that we know the season in which it occurs we have to understand where is it occurring it is occurring between 30 to 60 degrees right this is our other answer 30 to 60 degrees hence it is called the mid latitude because of it happens in between the two middle latitudes and the 30 and the 60 are the middle latitudes hence it's called the mid latitude cyclone then lastly our other mark is this one eastwards how is it moving it's moving eastwards or you could say from west to east from west to east or you could just simply say eastwards all right why does it move eastwards mainly because of the wind which we call the westerlies if you don't understand the winds you have to watch the video i dropped before this one because of it speaks more of the wind movement and air circulation around the earth all right so let's continue now that we understand this whole definition almost everything about the mid latitude cyclone we now have to understand the formation how does it form it has what we call five stages it is very important to understand all five stages. I once heard one YouTuber saying, no, it's very important to watch the, uh, the mature stage or to understand the mature stage because of 
Yes, the mature stage is usually the most important one, but then we have to understand from stage one, the initial stage, until the last stage, which is the dissipating stage, right? So stay tuned, like this video, comment, hey my guy, subscribe, okay? Okay, as I've said, we have five stages. The first one is called the initial stage. This is where everything starts, right? We know what, this is the line, right? This line is the latitude which is called a 60 degrees latitude. You understand what I'm saying? This 60 degrees latitude line is called a polar front. Right? This line is called a polar front or this latitude line is called a polar front. So under the polar front, we have polar easterlies. I remember I taught you about easterlies if you do not remember, watch the video I dropped before this one. And we know that easterlies, this is how they are moving, right? This is how the easterlies are moving. Because of, I said, they are named from where they are coming from. Why are they easterlies? Because of they are coming from the east, moving to the west. They are called easterlies. Don't mind if they are going west, but then they are called easterlies because of they are coming from the east, right? So these are what we call easterlies, right? These are easterlies. And on top of the polar front, we have tropical westerlies. I spoke about tropical westerlies and I'm speaking about them again. So the tropical westerlies, this is how they are moving right okay and as the summer season begins to end in south africa the winter season begins to approach how does it approach the polar easterlies coming from the polar high pressure belt we did learn about that you must watch the video i dropped before this one the easterlies the polar easterlies will now start to move further north towards the polar front the polar front it is the latitude of 60 degrees so the easterlies will begin to move further north that will force the westerlies the tropical westerlies to move further south so these MSs will now be moving in a parallel direction but then not mixing this is the first stage which is called the initial stage right this is what i call not i this is what is called the initial stage this is where everything begins. Then the second stage is what we call the wave formation stage. So obviously, if this begins to happen, this air starts to move further north and this westerly starts to move further south, this is how it looks like. It looks like this, right? So this is the wave formation stage. Why does it look like this? Because of the polar easterlies have obviously uplifted the polar front or the warm air so that will obviously cause what it will cause the warm air that is obviously underneath to rise in a sharp and a speedy manner so in this area we will now have a low pressure so looking at each and every mid latitude cyclones you will always find a low pressure under there remember what do we call this the wave formation stage right the wave formation stage okay and after stage two the wave formation stage we are obviously moving to the most important stage i heard one youtuber saying that and i agree with them the mature stage is the most important one make sure you fetch that script book again draw what i'm about to draw because of the more you draw the better you understand and the more you will never forget that's how i pass my geography make sure you fetch that script book while i'm still wiping this spot okay okay and most importantly the third stage the mature stage yes the mature stage all right i don't care if you've been listening for the whole past I don't know three minutes but then make sure that you now start paying attention because of this is where you get all your marks for mid latitude cyclone how am i going to make sure that you get them we'll be drawing a cross section diagram of a mid latitude cyclone the cross section that diagram that i will be drawing will be not the one that you should be drawing in your exam i will tell you why it begins with that line at the bottom right then on the mature stage we now know that the fronts have fully developed 
right? This is the warm front and this is a cold front. Why are they called something front? Because of they used the polar front in which you may remember from the initial stage to the wave stage, they use the polar front in their advantage to create these air conditions, right? So this is the warm sector or a warm front, I mean, a warm front. Then this one is a cold front. Okay, how do they exactly look like on a synoptic weather map? I'm just going to write this even though it is not needed on your exam paper. You do not have to show that this is a cold front and this is a warm front. But then for you to understand, I have to write it. So this is a cold front. The cold front have spikes like this. Right? This is a cold front. Then here it is what we call our warm front. All right, now what do we have? We have two marks, the cold front and the warm front. What is our other mark? We know that this wind or this weather condition moves eastwards. So we are going to draw our directions that are moving eastwards and maybe right even here eastwards, right? Now we know three things, warm front, cold front, and the direction right so what happens after the warm front have passed by because of they are moving eastwards what will happen here obviously what will happen after the warm front has passed by warm light here will be left warm light air will be left here so this area will be called the warm sector right so this is the warm sector right in the warm sector, it is obviously the cold air approaching or the cold front approaching. And we know as geography learners that cold front, it is very heavy and it is very dense. So it will obviously uplift the warm air which was left by the warm front up. So this cold front will obviously uplift the warm air which was left by the warm front. And cumulonimbus clouds will be formed. Obviously, as air rises, cumulonimbus clouds will be formed. Huge clouds will be formed. This, where well, once you see cumulonimbus clouds forming, you must know heavy precipitation is about to occur. So heavy precipitation occurs behind the warm front, in front the cold front. There is what heavy precipitation occurring. Then what else do we know? We know that this cyclone, it is moving on a circular like shape. And in the Southern hemisphere, we know that air rises clockwise and Northern anti or counter clockwise, right? So it definitely means that where the warm air it is going, there was obviously a cold front. So where the warm front it is approaching, there was obviously a cold front because of it is rotating. So here that means there is a cold sector. So the warm front it is approaching the cold sector as the cold front approached the warm sector, right? This is the cold sector. Okay, so we know that if the warm light air it is approaching the heavy and dense air, cold air obviously it will not be able to uplift the heavy cold air towards its full potential so it obviously will have small clouds because of warm air will uprise but then not be able to uplift a lot of air so small clouds will be formed and these clouds are namely cirrus stratus or nimbo stratus these clouds are associated with what we call light precipitation obviously when the clouds are not that dark light precipitation will okay so we know that in front of the warm front light precipitation it is occurring in front of the cold front heavy precipitation it is occurring so if you look at this cross-section diagram which i've drawn for you guys are you telling me that you are not getting the full 10 marks in which you should get. If not, like and subscribe so you can watch more of my videos to understand 
more of what I'm saying. All right. So now we know that the warm front is our first mark, the cold sector, second mark, the nimble stratus clouds, third mark, light have light precipitation, fourth mark, the direction, fifth mark, the warm sector, sixth and community numbers clouds, seventh, and the heavy precipitation, eighth, and the cold front nine and obviously naming the stage that this is the mature stage this is 10 flipping marks how come are you not getting it guys i'm not going to be following you around so that you could pass this year you have to do this on your own all right so now we are moving to stage number four guys i'm not going to be continuing heavy on stage number four i'm just going to say stage number four it is whereby this cold front it is now starting to catch up with the warm front so as it catches up with the warm front it will obviously uplift the warm front a bit so this is called the included or the concluded stage you can do your research or your dictionary i'm not your dictionary guys all right so this is the fourth stage whereby the cold air reaches uh, or we can say catches up with the warm front so it looks like this this is stage this is cold and this is warm it has obviously uplifted the warm so now under here we have what we call cold warm cold warm so it is now mixed this is the fourth stage then the last stage which is called the dissipating stage the last and final stage this one guys it is where the cyclone ends this means that the cold front have fully caught up with the warm front and they are now combined they have now mixed this is how it looks like this is the final stage the dissipating stage which has the cold warm cold warm cold warm right so this is the final mid latitude stage and i guess you found your marks guys if you want to continue as you should like subscribe because of we are moving to tropical easterlies oh no 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 tropical cyclones okay